Um, hello everyone, my name is Xi Wei and I'm a PhD student from Columbia University. And today I'm going to talk about my work in protecting virtual machines from hypervisor and host operating system exploits. And I collaborated with John Ko and Jason Ni in this work. Um, virtualization is the essential technology that drives popular cloud computing services that we are all probably familiar with. The basic idea is that virtualization allows multiple virtual machines to run on a single piece of hardware. And these virtual machines and their resources are managed by a privileged software called hypervisor. And modern hypervisors trusted computing bases usually consist of a full operating system kernel, which includes millions of lines of code because hypervisor can then reuse the existing OS functionality to support many virtualization features. And however, this results in a huge potential attack surface that um, the hypervisor code base with full access to VM data in CPU register, memory, and I.O. And therefore, hypervisors has been a tantalizing target for attackers as an adversary that exploited the hypervisor can gain full access to all hosted VMs data. And two of the most um, popular commodity hypervisors are KVM and Zen, and both of them include a full Linux kernel as part of their TCVs. KVM, as shown on the left, integrates a full Linux kernel directly in its hypervisor, while Zen, as shown on the right, runs a full Linux kernel in a privileged VM called DOM0 to provide I.O. and management functions like VM snapshot. And these hypervisors inherit all the vulnerabilities of the included Linux kernel and all the bugs in its large code base. And um, several previous work has attempted to address this security issue in hypervisors who um, protect virtual machine data. First, Overshadow and Intact design a framework to protect application data from a malicious operating system in a VM. However, these approaches rely on a trusted hypervisor to deliver the security guarantee and did not address the threats from complex hypervisor to virtual machine data. Others design micro hypervisors to reduce the hypervisor TCB. And as shown in the diagram, the resulting TCB in micro hypervisors is much smaller than commodity hypervisors like KVM and Zen. However, microhypervisors applied microkernel design principles to re-implement the hypervisor from scratch, which the implementation itself is not easy to maintain, and many virtualization features are lacking. Another approach used by Cloudvisor is to leverage nested virtualization to deprivilege the hypervisor in a virtual machine to protect um, the virtual machine's hosted VM's data. However, nested virtualization incurs unwanted overhead to virtual machine performance. Also, features like pair virtual I.O. is not supported by the encryption-based approach used by um, Cloudvisor. And therefore, to address this critical issue in hypervisor security, we proposed a new hypervisor design called HypeSec. Um, our design reduces the hypervisor TCB necessary to protect virtual machine data. And the goal of our design is to improve security of hypervisors with modest implementation efforts, but provide full operating system function, uh, full hypervisor functionality. So unlike microhypervisors, our design focuses on retrofitting existing hypervisors instead of rewriting a new hypervisor as it's a difficult task that limits both functionality and deployment. And therefore, HypeSec's design partitions a monolithic hypervisor into a small and trusted core visor and a large and untrusted host visor. The core visor is the TCB of HypeSec. And as shown in the diagram here, um, when applying HypeSec to retrofit KVM, um, the Linux kernel is included in the untrusted host visor, which encapsulates most of the hypervisor complexity. Um, HypeSec leverages hardware virtualization features widely available on ARM and x86 hardware to simplify its design, which uh, uses the hardware to efficiently deprivilege the host visor and protect virtual machine data. And also, unlike previous work, 
Um, HypeSec focuses on access control based approach to protect virtual machines instead of encryption. So unlike CloudVisor, our design is flexible enough to support commonly used virtualization functions like per virtual I.O. And HypeSec protects VM data in CPU registers, memory, boot images, and I.O. buffers. And now, before we discuss how HypeSec protects VM data, here we introduce our threat model. So the goal of HypeSec is to protect the confidentiality and integrity of virtual machine data against remote attackers with access to the hypervisor or its hosted VMs. Here, we do not consider attacks on availability, um, physical attacks, and side channel attacks in our threat model. Um, so HypeSec's design is inspired by our observation that many hypervisor functions can be supported without accessing VM data. For example, access to VM CPU register is unnecessary for CPU scheduling. And therefore, to keep the TCB small in HypeSec, um, our design tasks the core visor to provide functions that require full access to VM data and mechanisms to protect VM data against the untrusted host visor. And therefore, the core visor is in charge of enforcing access control policy to VM data and providing hypervisor functions that require full access to VM data, including CPU virtualization and page table management. While the host visor, on the other hand, provides complex hypervisor functions that require no access to unencrypted VM data. For instance, the host visor provides I.O. and interrupt virtualization, as well as resource allocation. Um, due to time constraint, we do not enumerate all the hypervisor functions um, the design supports here. Um, so please refer to our paper for more details. Um, HypeSec's approach is to uh, protecting VM data um, using the, the following principles. The core visor focuses on only access control policy on VM data in CPU and memory um, and relies on the virtual machine themselves to protect their I.O. data. This simplifies the core visor complexity. And we think this is possible because recent applications are increasingly designed to use end-to-end -end encryption to protect their I.O. channels already. So there is no need to, for the core visor to duplicate the protection effort. So a virtual machine can use secure network connections like TOS, SSL, or virtual disk encryption. Um, the core visor protects the encryption keys used by the virtual machines to protect, protect their I.O. data that are, that are loaded to VM CPU registers and memory. So after introducing HypeSec's general approach of VM data protection, here we first discuss how and where should HypeSec interpose on VM data accesses to protect VM data. In HypeSec, the core visor is granted full access to hardware resources. And with full access, um, the core visor controls um, accesses to VM data in all switches between um, host visor and virtual machines. The core visor controls the hardware to interpose VM exits and interrupts to protect virtual machine data. And depending on the exit reason, the core visor could handle an exit directly by himself to, to protect the data or switch to the host visor to use its functionality. For instance, to handle interrupts or VM accesses to virtual I.O. devices, as mentioned earlier, are provided by the host visor. Um, the core visor protects VM data in the switch before uh, going to the host visor to use its device drivers. And here, knowing that HypeSec interposes on VM exits to provide its protection mechanism, we now explain how HypeSec protects VM data in CPU and memory. Um, HypeSec leverages nested page tables um, provided by virtualization hardware to protect VM memory against the host visor. The core visor manages mapping in the host nested page table as shown in the uh, diagram here to control host visors access to physical memory. 
And here, when the host buzzer is running, the MMU first walks the host page table, as shown as host PT here, to the host buzzer maintains to translate the host virtual address to what we call VHPA. And then um, MMU walks the host nested page table maintained by the core buzzer to translate VHPA to machine physical address. And VHPA is one-to-one -one mapped to host physical addresses by the core visor, so to give the host visor essentially have the same view to physical memory as if it's running on bare metal. So this allows it to implicitly manage physical memory. The core visor allows host visor to access unallocated physical memory to provide memory allocation support for virtual machines. And in normal case, the core visor ensures that the host nested page table can never contain mapping to the core visor's own memory or virtual machine's memory. However, HypeSec allows host visor to access memory shared by virtual machines, um, as this can be useful to support functionality like pair virtual I.O. that requires shared memory communication between the host visor and virtual machines. And here, like to protect virtual machine CPU, the core visor interposes VM exits and stores the VM CPU context from hardware to vCPU state structure. Um, the vCPU state structure is allocated from the core visor's private memory, so the host visor um, and the attackers has no access to the state to compromise VM data. And the core visor allows the host visor to access intermediate state. Uh, as shown in the diagram here, which contains VM general purpose register values necessary for host visor to provide its functionality. And the intermediate state is sanitized and contains no VM data. For example, as mentioned earlier, I.O. is provided by the host visor. So to handle, for example, here a MMIO write, the core visor provides the write data from VM general purpose registers to the intermediate state, so the host visor can take the value and update uh, virtual devices that it maintains. And on the other hand, to handle a uh, memory map IO read, the host visor provides the read data it gets from the virtual device to the intermediate state, so the core visor then copies the data to hardware general purpose registers of the virtual machine. And here, based on the design, we have applied HypeSec to retrofit the KVM hypervisor. Um, the current implementation supports hardware with ARM virtualization extensions and provides wide range of hypervisor functions on various hardware platforms. As shown in the table, our HypeSec implementation based on KVM results in significantly smaller TCB than the mainline KVM and Zen, while providing strong VM data protection. Our HypeSec implementation on ARM leverages hardware virtualization features provided by ARM virtualization extensions. Um, as shown in the diagram, the core visor runs on EO2, the hypervisor mode, uh, the privileged CPU mode provided by ARM on top of the existing kernel mode and user mode um, to run hypervisors. The host visor, on the other hand, is the privilege to buy the core visor to run in the EO1 mode, which is kernel mode on ARM. The core visor uses stage two page tables, uh, the nested level page tables on RMVE uh, virtualization extensions to support host visor's memory access and uh, to restrict it and protect the virtual machine data. And finally, the core visor controls the system memory management unit to uh, protect DMA accesses. And we tested application workloads as listed in the table on real ARM server class hardware on both um, bare metal and virtual machines running uh, on KVM and HypeSec. The workloads here include a mix of CPU and IO intensive work benchmarks, which some of them are commonly used server applications, including Apache, MemPatchD, and MySQL. And here the graph shows the application performance of VMs running on mainline KVM and HypeSec. The numbers here are all normalized to bare metal performance, so lower bar means better performance. 
So as can be seen, HypeSec incurs small overhead in most of the benchmarks. The only exception is TCP merge, which the benchmark measures the bandwidth of VM sending network data to a client machine. And while the Vert IO driver in KVM is able to batch the transaction, our current implementation of the Vert IO front end driver in the virtual machine traps additionally on each uh, transaction to the core visor due to the memory access control mechanism we provide. And we leave the optimizations in batching the transactions as future work. So here is to conclude my presentation. We have created HypeSec, a new hypervisor design that reduces the TCB necessary to protect virtual machines. And HypeSec decomposes a monolithic hypervisor into a small and trusted core visor and a large but untrusted host visor, with the latter could include an entire host operating system kernel. And when VMs employ end-to-end -end encryption to protect their IO data, HypeSec can protect the confidentiality and integrity of all VM. And finally, we demonstrated the feasibility of HypeSec that it can support commodity hypervisors by retrofitting KVM and significantly reduces its TCP. And that's it for my talk. Thanks for listening. I'm now happy to answer questions. Uh, hi, Andrew Walbrand here from Google. Uh, can you tell us more about how you use the SMMU to prevent a compromised host visor or VM from using DMA <laughs> to bypass your memory protections? So uh, we provide, uh, we do like trap and emulate, right? So we unmap the SMMU register from host visor. So everything that the host visor tries to access has to trap to the core visor, right? So we have control over um, the page table that the host visor configures. So we do the same memory access control mechanism we use for memory management, memory management unit. We have like, we track the ownership of pages when the host visor builds, you know, the, the page table for uh, SMMU for each of the device. So they cannot control like, the device to do malicious DMA accesses. Okay, so it has to be a subset of the memory that it has access to normally? Sorry? So the memory that which it can use, they can program the SMU to, has to be a subset of the memory the VM has access to? Is that yeah, the idea? I, okay. yeah. Cool. Thank something you. like that. Hi, thank you. John Criswell, University of Rochester. Nice talk. Thanks. Uh, comment and a question. First, your work reminds me of the dichotomy work published in uh, VEE 2016. Uh, maybe afterwards we can chat about uh, the similarities and differences between those two. Um, but my question is, is um, so you have this, um, this hypervisor that runs on top of the core visor, I forget its name. Um, so you're, you're successfully protecting one guest virtual machine from another because the core visor is small, but you're still increasing the size of the TCB for one guest virtual machine, right? So if I'm an attacker, I can either attack applications in that guest virtual machine, the operating system in that guest virtual machine, or now your additional hypervisor running on top of core visor but below that operating system. So um, am, I correct, am I correct in that assessment? And if so, do you have ideas on how to, on how to reduce the TCB even further? Yeah, so our threat model is not to prevent the VM itself from being compromised, right? So the VM can be compromised, but we isolate even this malicious VM from the rest of the good VMs, right? Mm -hmm. So it cannot get access to even host visor. Um, so our model is that we assume host visor or a VM can be compromised, but we guarantee that the rest of the good ones, the good VMs are not affected. Okay, yeah, I understand that's your threat model. I, yeah. I, th I think that would be an interesting direction for future work. Okay. All right, thank you. Yeah, we can chat later, so thanks. Thanks a lot, that was great. Thank you.